Hello, hello. Hi, what's up, buddy? Uh, that is an excellent question. You called me on. What can I do for you? Um, well, I thought we were chatting about something. Uh, well, I assume something about that tweet I posted. Um, something particular objectionable to you about it. Oh, that probably be it. What was the... Do you remember what the original tweet was? Uh, not off the top of my head. I can pull it up quickly. Okay, yeah, sure. <sighs> Nobody retweeted it this morning, so it should be quick to find. Here we go. Uh, so on June 4th, quote, if we actually held political content creators to account for their little acts of treasury to their avowed causes, we wouldn't have Destiny more or less openly betraying everything he ever claimed to stand for out of greed and hatred for other awful people doing his same bit. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a good place to start. Wait, what yeah, am I betraying good. out of greed? Okay, well, we can be... Let me be as fair to you as possible, so if you'll allow me, I'll sort of recapitulate what I understand your situation to be, and then you can let me know if I'm being fair. Sure. Okay, cool. So what I was talking about here is concerned with how you deal with other content creators. Surprise, surprise, there's going to be nothing new here. So let's take Demon Mama as an example of what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I like this one because it highlights the unfairness of the situation you're in. So we know how Demon Mama got started as a very large online figure. Engagement with you of any kind is worth its weight in gold, yes? What this means is that if she can secure really any sort of engagement with you whatsoever, especially a hostile engagement, uh -huh. even if you successfully make her look like a fool, and I think there's definitely an audience that thinks that you have, and I've had moments, uh, her visibility skyrockets. Doesn't matter how well it goes for her in the moment, just pure your benefit. Sure. And because she knows that, just regularly being associated with you at all supplies her with visibility as well as therefore money, people like that will do and say anything to get a response from you. And no matter how abusive or dishonest she is because of your relative size, people will blame you for diverting your audience to terrorize her if you respond. Almost regardless of what you say, and uh, it gets worse actually because almost any response you make has the perverse result of signal boosting her platform. So defending yourself only encourages her to repeat the process. Um, again, it's perverse, but you in effect helped make her channel viable just by defending yourself. Just by being you, and by being decent enough to give her the light of day, for a moment, you helped her find money and recognition just for interacting with you. Uh -huh. And then there's the snowball effect, where other people then seek out engagements with her to leech off of her increased visibility, further contributing to her growth, etc. Other examples abound. Keffel's made disgusting false claims about you, and was likewise rewarded for it. So it doesn't matter how nice or mean you are, just by engaging with these people, you help them grow. So I think I get your frustration here. Am I being fair to you so far? Um, yeah, I mean, it sounds like I say so, yeah. Okay, cool. So, honestly, Stephen, I don't know how you explain this. Um, wait a I don't know. I don't know how you explain how you can help someone increase her funds and visibility who, in your words, literally flew to fucking France to get into a boat to help drown refugees, as well as said to a trans person you will never be a woman, or give a lifeline to Nick Fuentes on YouTube after he'd been excised from it entirely, as well as an advert for his cozy platform he probably couldn't have dreamed of. I don't know how you can explain abetting people like this, and then say that you haven't completely betrayed the communities they continue to predate upon this day that you built your platform advocating for. Yeah, I mean, I guess the issue is that if I were to take everything that you've said thus far as uh -huh. being true, which it is true, um, and this is a discussion I've had in my community a lot, where I'm basically yeah. left in a world where I can never engage with anybody that I have substantial disagreements with because I would signal boost them. Um, I see that, like, I'm not invoking Vosh to shit talk about it, but like Vosh has like basically employed this strategy where he said that like I'm not going to engage with anybody that I disagree with that has a smaller platform than me, and I think that basically kills my entire business model <laughs> and what I enjoy doing on stream. Like I want to be able to engage with people that are substantially smaller than me, um, or even people that I abhorrently disagree with. My goal, my hope is that if I engage with somebody, it's not like I would hope that I'm not going to lose a ton of fans to like a white nationalist or something because their arguments are so much better my hope would be that i can make good enough arguments for whatever it is i support that ideally i'm pulling more people away from them than what i would lose but yeah so that's the that's the greed part it's it's, it's for money which i get but well i mean you say greed 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 if you're gonna if Cash. that's the if that's the lens you're gonna put it in technically every single political person is just operating for greed is that my understanding or because the, I mean, like, I, I'm I, I'm not. I, I know a few people who aren't. Well, anytime you put out an argument, your goal is ultimately to convince or persuade, right? 
Uh, not really. I'm I'm doing this as a courtesy. You you asked me to come on to make an account of this. It impugned you directly, so I'm. Well, but I mean, like, in your impugning of me, your goal is probably to be convincing and set impugning, right? You're not just, like, throwing this out into the ether for no reason, right? Like, you want to convince people that you're correct on something. Not particularly. I think most people already know this. Again, none of this is new. Okay, hold on. Let's... Okay, let's get a little bit more fundamental. When you make an argument, you make an argument to argue something, right? Totalogically, we can agree with that, right? When you make an argument, it's to argue something, right? Well, I didn't really make an argument. I made a statement. If you make a statement that's going to be disagreeable to another person and you provide justification for said statement, then that statement can be seen as an argument, right? So well, like what right I just, now... What I, just, what I just gave you was an argument. You agreed to it, so... Yeah. So What do we well, even have to talk about at this point? Well, it just seems... It seems a bit hollow or vacuous to say that anybody who's trying to convince people that their political ideology is correct is just greedy because in that case literally every single person that practices politics no no, no. The, the the greed is you're interacting with people and in effect supplying them with funds and resources to hurt other people so even if well wait when you I, say, I don't when you say, I, I don't know how you justify that well yeah just to be clear when you say providing them with funds to hurt people that's a yes. very like direct like i'm literally like sending money to fuentes or i'm saying like guys go check out nick fuentes here or whatever um I think that that's significantly different than you shouldn't be allowed to engage with anybody because they're smaller than you and they might get more popular off of those engagements, right? Or interactions. No, I think that's a, that's a knockdown argument against doing that in this case. You're talking about people whose careers are predating upon minority groups. So then... This is purely black and white. Well, it's, clearly it's not black and white. Um, but like, with, so then is your prescription then that if you're a large content creator, you should just never interact with somebody that you perceive to be as like hateful towards minority groups? Yes. If you're doing so in a way that benefits them in their political activities, yes, absolutely. As I, the Nick Fuentes example is illustrative. He's been excised off of YouTube. You functionally act as a lifeline. Okay. Well, in that case... I guess I wouldn't have a problem necessarily. I mean, I, I would. I would argue that this thought process is um, bad. But um, I guess more to the point, I don't think I have ever advocated that we should never interact with people we disagree with. I've kind of built my whole platform off of interacting with people. Well, the issue is not disagreement. Well, here, well real quick, the, re the reason why I'm saying this is just because like, I don't think you can call me hypocritical for doing this because this has kind of been part and parcel of what I've done for... The, the, really the past like five or six years right your justification as... for uh visiting if i remember the context correctly your justification for visiting the house of ice Poseidon was that he wasn't someone like lauren southern who again in your words went to france to drown refugees yeah that was a that was a while ago i've changed in my political views in terms of like who i'm willing to engage with or not i see so you're you're but now also, willing well but also to, it... just 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 to be clear quickly just so i understand you uh -huh. um the the shift you've made is you're now you're now comfortable materially helping because that's that's what you're doing by regularly that, appearing to this you, person you, in a friendly i mean rose wrist made an excellent video on this this is largely where i got i, I understand what you're saying from. i just you have to have a yeah. few more steps of separation otherwise you are materially helping these people as well is that a fact yes oh well then enjoy your video game steven have a good night <laughs> well i was gonna say because my if i'm having a conversation with you then I do better in viewership than when I'm not having these types of conversations. And if you're helping to elevate my platform, you're inadvertently also elevating the platform that's elevating other racist people. So, but I guess we didn't get to go to that part. Well, um, <laughs> okay. Uh, that was a, <laughs> that was a conversation, I guess. Yeah, imagine needing to take three days to schedule this conversation. Jeez. He was just waiting for a chance to leave and you gave it to him? He sounded like he would he would have been able to engage, but um, maybe not. Maybe he just had like this part of the script written out and then he was like done after that, maybe. Oh, true. Maybe it can be a YouTube short. He's a legit schizo. Watch his wash debate. I don't want to watch a bunch of videos on him now. That's fucking weird. They expect one of us in the wreckage, brother. True. My now the real question is: Is he gonna make a video for his YouTube channel about this conversation that was longer than the actual conversation? <laughs> Who was that? Um, some insane dude on Twitter called President Sunday, or like he—I maybe I shouldn't call him insane, but he's like he engages in a lot of destiny hate.
we'll say. You are monetarily helping people you disagree with by engaging with them at any level. Meanwhile, I will engage with you at this level, and I am totally not monetarily helping you, and not the extension. Those people I disagree with. LLL tilde tilde LLL. 90 minute video with frame chimping, 100% coming with the title of Destiny admits he makes videos for money. Technically, he preempted your argument by of aiding them by engaging with you, by disengaging with you. So he won that debate in my book. Well, but I mean, technically he lost because now he's elevated my platform, arguably for greed. One thing I don't like is when people, I don't like it when people try so hard to preempt your arguments that they will like, that they'll try really hard not to agree with pretty obvious stuff. Like when you say something like, well, when you make an argument, aren't you trying to convince somebody of something? And they're like, no. Like, well, <laughs> wait, hold on. Isn't that like... Isn't that kind of the entire purpose of making an argument? Is to convince somebody? No. Well, okay. I sure. I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If that's. If I guess. Okay. You think the premise said at the beginning is actually true? It's kind of just accepted in this community, but has anyone actually studied it? Well, the issue we've had this conversation a lot in my chat, and now I just kind of like disregard it because, like, basically, people will say, um, uh, "This is kind of where." Oh, here it is. This is kind of where Vosh is at at the moment, where he's like, I'm not going to engage with any smaller creator because um, I don't want to elevate their platform. But it, it essentially just turns you into like, a, um, I don't want to say clout strike, but you're basically like, I'll only debate you if you're famous enough, is basically what you're saying, which feels kind of weird, especially if the only way that you climbed as a small content creator is by having larger people like me debate you. So it seems a little bit weird to turn around and do that. Um, but then it also precludes you from basically debating like anybody that disagrees with you unless you can gain off of them, which I think is actually, that's actually the greedy position, right? I'm not going to have a debate with you unless I stand to financially gain from it, which is a little bit weird for me, but.